It's not often I'm at a loss for words, especially after a Leafs win, but yesterday was different. First of all, my heartfelt condolences go out to the family and friends of the 10 people who died yesterday, as well as the 16 others in the hospital, all because of a true act of evil. The people we lost loved, and were loved, and are loved. And this horrible thing, this cowardly act, does not define the victims' lives, it does not define Toronto, and it does not define us. We weren't dividing we weren't spreading apart. We were coming together in the streets by the thousands. That's who we are. We love a sport. We love a city. We love each other. Our greatest act of defiance against this can be asking yourself how you can help somebody today. A GoFundMe page has been set up to assist the victims and their families. There's a link below this video in the description. If you can help out, please do. We are not filled with hate. We are not filled with fear. We are Toronto. Now let's show the world. Now if it's at all possible after this, let's talk about the hockey game we just saw, just like we always would. I got a question for you. Oh boy, am I ready for game seven? I have no idea. How could I possibly be ready for game seven? And at the same time, I've been ready for five years. Why? No, my question was, what's goaltender interference, dude? I have no idea, but if it makes you feel any better, neither does the NHL. My question is, are you in. No doubt. Hi! Leaf Nation did win this for Austin Lucas! Oh, Austin Matthews is a Leaf! Why do I watch hockey? Stressfully, mostly. Are you in? No, Victory Puppies Boy, big win, Charlie. Big win. Oh, oh, Iggy, I dropped yours. I'm sorry. Let's try that again. Iggy, catch it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Charlie, there's yours too. Charlie's so excited, I gotta cover it up. If the Leafs win game seven, you boys are gonna get four treats each. Are you guys in? That's right. Leafs win! 3-1 in game six over the Boston Bruins, forcing a game seven on Wednesday in Boston. And on such a strange night, an emotional night, the Leafs managed to play their best game of this playoff series so far. Ron Hainsey spoke before the game and he said everything you need to know. Offering condolences to the victims, commending all the first responders who were the first, second, and third stars yesterday, then he said, and I quote, as for tonight, we're going to play our heart out for this city. You could see it in his face. You could hear it in his voice. He meant that. You can't say something like that and not mean it. And after that, a game that already meant so much to the city when people woke up in the morning meant even more. But all you can do is try your hardest. And trying your hardest doesn't mean you're going to win. The Leafs have got to play 60 minutes, maybe more, against one of the best teams in the league and beat them for the second straight time for the right to beat them a third straight time. The Air Canada Centre with a perfect moment of silence before the game. Anthem singer Martino Ortiz Luis letting the building do most of the singing, which was absolutely the right move. Game six, Leafs Bruins, let's go. Mere minutes in, Kasperi Kapanen handling the puck in his own no, no! Spins, falls, turns it over, Marshan puck on his stick, shoots! Oh! Freddy goes down into his glove, Marshan goes five hole, the puck hits the inside of Freddy's leg and squirts just wide of the net. Barely over six minutes into the game, it might be a completely different game if that goes in. It didn't. Let's go. Collect yourselves, okay? Are we good? Are we good? This is no time to panic! Then why are you yelling? Who said that? A few minutes later, Janssen, Kadri, Nylander responding. By the way, Babcock, yes. Kadri throws it in front. He's been hungry since coming back, but Willie just can't bang it home. Ah. Derma gets his pocket picked by Pasternak behind the net. He throws it in front for Marshan. The Leafs managed to get a stick in the way of the pass, which they did a great job of in game six. Holy smokes. TVR with a chance. Ah! And it was a bit frantic, but we head to the first intermission with a tied game 0-0. The Leafs, for the most part, were staying with the Bruins that period. It never really felt like the Leafs were out of it by any means. But despite getting a very fortunate power play halfway through the frame because the Bruins took another puck over the glass penalty, the Leafs got outshot 17-10. Bruins had a really strong back half to that period, and the Leafs just fell a little behind. But heading into the second, you're in it. You're in it. And that's all you're trying to be. Just have a good start to the second, okay? Off the faceoff, take the brush, shoot, scores. Not what I had in mind. The puck went through about 37 legs, which was impressive, because I could have swore there were only 10 players on the ice, not including the goalies. 
and the Bruins have a 1-0 lead. And Jake DeBrus' celebration, man, his smile, his chirping all game long, that is a kid with confidence, man. We were talking about potential game breakers for the Bruins heading into the series, and ironically, I said, you know, I think Danton Heinen is going to be big. Sure enough, he's scratched heading into this one, and DeBrusque has been a star pretty much the whole time. I think it might have just grazed Hainsey's arm, and you see it in his face, not just that his team was down, not just that the Leafs needed to win this game, but because the Leafs needed to win this game. But enough, you gotta respond, let's go. Shortly after, Nylander in there like a speed demon. Four Bruins in front, just looking at him, afraid to attack because Kadri's in front like a Rottweiler. Zeitz with a shot, rebound! William Nylander ties the game with his first of the playoffs, just like that! And in the same way that Jake DeBrusque had a little smirk. Oh, Willie's got that boyish face! You can instantly tell, oh, scoring that goal, tying the game was just an added bonus. In that face, in that smile, you can see that William Nylander remembered he was William Nylander. Like he forgot. Imagine being reminded you're William Nylander. Hey, uh, you? Huh? Who, me? Yeah, hey, so we were doing a little digging and we figured out who you are. Oh, oh my goodness, okay, what did you find? Well, it turns out you're William Nylander. William Nylander. Yeah? The sick hockey player. The very same. With the sick flow? Touch it yourself. I'm Swedish? Try it. Taksamukit. What? It was rusty, but you'll get there. Oh my god, I, sh I should go score goals or something. You should. That's what William Nylander does. Have fun. About a minute later, a line that I call the hungry, hungry hippos comes out. Because they all want the puck. Zach Hyman. I don't Connor Brown. I don't Austin Matthews stick lift. I don't I don't they just stay on side. Matthews around, throws it in front. Hyman sick backhander will fall and score. We're hungry, hungry hippos. We score goals in your face. Oh no, they might review it. They just might have a case. Oh, I don't like these new lyrics. They're going upstairs. And I saw it live. I'm like, what are you talking? about. I see the replay and they talk about Hyman bumping into Tuka Rask skate. I'm like, what are you talking about? Then they talk about it a few more times and they talk about Hyman basically taking Rask stick with him and I'm like, oh, that's what you're talking about. Bergeron's pushing him in, but that's probably goaltender interference. Look, I don't know what the stupid rule is. I don't think you do either and I don't think they do. All I ask for out of NHL officiating is consistency, which has been an issue this series. But I think back to a Leafs-Penguins game from maybe a month or so ago. Brian Dumoulin crashes the net and he scored, but the goal was disallowed. It wasn't doing anything nefarious. It was just a hard cut to the net, but he did make contact with the goalie. That was disallowed. This was disallowed, and I thought that was the closest comparison. Save your energy, kids. You're gonna have plenty more time to be mad before the game's over. Bruins coming back the other way. Marshan with a clear shot, but Freddie coming up with a big Danish for every Leafs turnover. But responding the other way late in the frame is a line that I call the too old for this nonsense line. Marner chips it into the corner, and Placanitz bangs, and Marlowe bangs because they are too old for this nonsense. Puck makes it back to the point to Ron Hainsey, who is equally too old for this nonsense. Nonsense. He throws it on, Brad Marchand almost gets it, but Bacanitz is way too old for that nonsense. And sitting there lying and waiting of that puck. A kid whose blood is half blue and white because he lives and breathes the Toronto Maple Leafs, whose other half of his blood is bright neon green for the why did you have so much before bed? Mountain Dew coursing through his veins! Mitch Marner! <laughs> They reviewed one, so you got a Mountain Dew one. Two, one, Leafs lead. Freddie Anderson has done his share of game-saving, game-stealing, but Mitch Marner, two goals and six assists in six games so far, has been the Leafs' best forward, maybe their best player, not named Freddie Anderson. Hainsey, great play at the blue line. Placanitz, what an effort all over the zone. And Marner with a sick backhand. From the lifelong Leafs fan, a backhander that would make Matt Sundin proud. Beautiful. Before the period is done, however, Nazem Kadri takes takes a slashing call. And this was a perfect example of the type of call I've been talking about for a while now. Something that, if it's away from the play, is probably ignored, but it directly affected puck possession, and you can't ignore that. Once again, save your energy, because don't you worry, you'll have more reason to be mad later. Leafs have about a minute 50 left in the penalty to kill at the beginning of the third, and they do. But pretty soon after, Polak is in front with Bacchus. Bacchus is in a battle, and bing! I don't care if it's deliberate or not, Bacchus beamed from in the face with his elbow. And the refs blow the play dead because the goalie's on the ground. Evidently, however, they thought he was just taking a nap. And then they see a scuffle break out between Polak and Bacchus, and they're like, well, that's a peculiar thing to get into a scuffle about. Come on there, boys. Freddie's been working hard all night. He just wanted a little 40 winks. And the penalties were as follows. David Bacchus, two minutes for roughing against Roman Polak. Roman Polak, roughing against David Bacchus. And Jake Gardner, two minutes roughing against David David Backus. I made that last one up, but it wouldn't surprise you, would it? Are you actually the worst? Explain yourself. Look, man, I, my job's really hard. And so are David Backus's elbows. Do your job. Now, 
I saw some argue that Roman Polak should have got a double minor there after he did start all the hooting and hollering. My theory there is refs know they can't catch everything. And in this instance, they might have seen that they didn't catch everything. Had an inkling anyway, Exhibit A, the sleepy goalie on the floor. And if you're into that whole code thing, a defender sticking up for his goalie who just got knocked down is pretty common. But for the Bruins fans who weren't exactly happy with that, oh, save your energy. You're going to have plenty more time to be upset later. During those coincidental minors, hi everyone, it's so good to see you again. My name is Nazem Kadri, Bob Ross, and this is a playoff edition of Drawing Penalties. They say and I'm back. I'd agree with that. I just take my time with all these picks. I still believe in that. Now we're going to draw everything in red because I lost most of my markers because my basement is Fubar, that's right. So here's Charlie McAvoy right here. He's a player on the Smelly Bruins. He's got his stick right there. And what he's going to do is give you the lumber. And when a player gives you the lumber to your feet, what do you do? That's right, you give him the lumber right back. Timber, you hit the ice and he hits the box. Man, that bit would have been so much more satisfying if the Leafs had scored. Later in the period, Matthews and Nylander robbed! Oh my god, Freddy, slow down, slow down! <laughs> Zone. I'm in behind the back to Blakanis. Okay, that's that takes gusto. Marlow and back is collide. We'll get to that in a second because Blakanis is too busy burying it into the empty net. Three, one, Leafs. We're going back to Boston, baby. Shout out Joe Bowen. And down three, one in this series, the Leafs win Game Five in Boston. Come back home. All the emotions in the world, and they win three, one in Game Six in Toronto forcing Game 7 Wednesday. What are you doing Wednesday night? This battery is almost cooked. I'm probably going to have to recharge it mid-shooting it. I'm not even done talking about the game. William Nylander is in this series. That goal went straight to his legs. He was playing great even before that goal. That's how he got the goal. And when he's going and with the line spread out the way they are, the Leafs have incredible depth and they can beat anybody. Mitch Marner, Rockstar. Matthews didn't get a point that counted anyway. Dancing. I'm, I'm brown. I'm. Hainsey stayed true to his word. Zaitsev with a two assist performance. Kapanen making up for an early mishap. And Thomas Plakanitz, welcome to the Leafs, buddy. What an unbelievable player this guy has become for this team. Buried the empty netter. Key on an assist. He barely tapped the thing, but he deserved it 100%. Blocking shots, literally throwing himself, flinging himself into the fray. Getting a stick in the slot, breaking everything up. The Leafs had an incredible third period. It might have been their best third period of the whole series, and he might have been their best player in that period. And sometimes it's so easy to gloss over Freddy because how do you fawn over that many saves? Could have made a 15, 20 minute video just on the saves Freddy made in this game. But it wasn't just the desperation saves, and oh, there were a few of those. He was tracking the puck so well. Freddy was in the zone. That was peak Freddy. The Leafs defense who have turned it on over the past two games and who limited the Bruins to just seven shots in that third period. Incredible. They are going to need to be on their game in Boston. Freddy's big, he's athletic, but his number one trait might be his eyes. And in game seven on home ice, the Bruins are going to try to take those away from him. And judging by the Bacchus incident, possibly literally. Speaking of which, at the end of the game, Marlowe and Bacchus colliding, allowing Placanitz an open lane to score the empty Net. Saw a few people go, is that not interference? Not gonna lie, I wondered that myself. But if you think Kadri went down easy on the McAvoy trip, hmm. Marlowe with a bit of contact, Bacchus with a little bit of hoping for it. What's the term? Playoff hockey? You get away with a lot of stuff. For instance, Marchand punching Freddy again. And the Leafs force a game seven with a victory on home ice after a day like that. And if you don't like sports, you're missing the point. Yep, there it went, the battery went. So I might as well get to your questions and my conclusion. But before that, following up on last game, I tracked my heart rate in the first, second, and third periods of this game. Here's my heart rate for the first period, an average heart rate of 93 beats per minute. You can pretty much see the commercial breaks in my heartbeat. This was the second period, an average of 99 beats per minute. This was a 53 minute walk I took with the dogs earlier that day, an average of 102 beats per minute. The two dips into the green are when Iggy took a poop. And finally, the third period. An average of 107 
beats per minute. Five beats per minute faster than my walk. After winding down, I checked in bed last night. I have a resting heart rate of 67 beats per minute, which just, that made me upset. And then it started going up. But yeah, hockey's kind of bad for you, and I wouldn't have it any other way. On a scale of 9 to 10, how uncomfortably nervous are the Bruins? Days of yours said 25. Richard Coffey said 69. Nice, Richard. You're the winner. Hello, how are you emotionally preparing for Game 7? And does it concern you that Tampa is sitting around sipping tea right now? For preparation, just the usual uh, deflecting and denial until inevitably fainting. And in terms of Tampa sipping tea, I believe Mike Babcock has an answer for that. Well, you want to be playing meaningful games because that means you're going to be prepared for meaningful games. And if they're playing meaningful games and we're not, then they're going to be more prepared than us. Or the opposite's going to happen. So anyway, enjoy your tea. How's that? How traumatized is Charlie? Okay, so in this game, I would go, yeah! And he'd go, and get up and he'd be all scared. And then after yelling and screaming and scaring him, I would immediately be like, good boy, good boy, good boy, and give him lots of praise. And I can't help but feel like that's just confusing him and making it worse, but hopefully he's got three more rounds to get acclimatized. Are you in? Yes! Are you in? Yes! Are you in? Yeah! And I know the Leafs are in too. For the city, for the fans, for everyone. I'll end on this note. I began this series yelling and screaming about slaying the dragon, but this team is not the team that it was five years ago. Even the players who were on the team that night, you don't have to answer for that now. All you have to answer for is your effort in game seven in Boston on Wednesday night. That is the dragon that needs to be slain. It's not about the 2013 Bruins, it just happens to be about the 2018 Bruins. You've beaten them twice in a row. You've beaten them three times in the last six games. It's an even fight. They fought for home ice advantage in the regular season and they earned it. The Boston Bruins are a fantastic hockey team. They deserve to be where they are. But the Leafs are pretty darn good too. And you've earned this spot. You've earned this shot. Now go out there and play the game of your lives. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Reminder that there is a link down below to a fund to help out the victims of what happened yesterday. And one last question, heading into game seven. Are you in?